You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. Hello, this is Autumn Fisher, and you're in Wen's World. Man, he doesn't look a thing like he sounds. Wow, he's really ugly. No wonder why he's in radio. <laughs> I can relate. Flames of Tinder have been a fanning. It embraces the hair on the back of your neck. It is all about college football and the traditions and the passions. The mind will quiet on its own if you tune into those two things. It's a really magical thing. It really is a learning chemical and it's involved in so many different aspects of human behavior. The Wens is back from vacation. Here we go! Time now for Sports Talk with Griffin Adkins. Can Tim Tebow make an MLB team? Will he have an angel in the outfield? Now, can Tim Tebow make an MLB team on his own merit? That's the question. Because I think he'll make a team this season. I think this is all set up for... uh, I heard someone had a theory that maybe the Tampa Bay Rays, they're not selling any tickets there. They're a terrible team. You bring in Tebow for the last month of the season. You sell Tebow jerseys. You sell tickets. Florida goes crazy. They love it. It turns into like a spectacle. It's a stunt. Baseball teams used to do things like this back in the day. They'd have like little... uh, um, what do they call little people? I think that's the politically correct term. Come out and play, or maybe a female pitcher, or old people, or whatever. So uh, it's the entertainment business. The Atlanta Braves, they should do it. Why not? Bring the guy out there. The team's terrible. I, I'd have him on the team next year. They're not going to be good next year either. Have a new stadium and have Tim Tebow out in left field or right field or whatever. Why not? And will he have an angel in the outfield? Well, I think that's a given, obviously. I mean, he's Tim Tebow. He's the second son of God. This has been Griffin Adkins with your sports report. This is Wins World. Welcome. You know, the Wins just loves having return visitors and the great Amber Berry of West Side Yoga right here in Atlanta. Back in Wins World. Welcome back. How are you, Amber? Thank you. I need to come visit you more often. You're really good for my ego. Oh, well, <laughs> well you make it easy. It's so good to be in your presence right now. You know, Amber has a brand new show on Biz 1190 next Sunday, the very first show, right? Yes, I'm so excited and so honored to be a part of this team. Yeah, well, we're, we're so happy to have you here at Salem. The name of the show is Crazy Healthy Radio, where she incorporates... West Side and East Side, medicine, uh, diet, exercise, yoga, nourishment, all sorts of health issues in general, right? Merging all into one. 
Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So we talk about anything and everything we can do to get healthy and there are no boundaries. Yeah. And I love that. I love that. And of course, you can hear Crazy Healthy Radio every single Sunday starting next week at 1230 Eastern on Biz 1190, also available on SoundCloud for sure. Well, last time we came, we gave us an, an overarching, just a foundational view of yoga, and I had a lot of questions. So this week, I'd love to talk about the mindfulness factor of yoga and what it means to you as an instructor and somebody who practices. Absolutely. And, you know, mindfulness is something that's becoming more and more relevant. We're seeing Olympic athletes are talking about how they have used mindfulness to become better at their sports and executives are using it to help their employees be more productive at work. Kids going back to school are practicing mindfulness techniques so that they can have a better school year. Um, And the great thing about it is it's free. It's simply a matter of witnessing your thoughts and choosing the ones that serve you rather than letting the mind go crazy. We call it the monkey mind and letting the mind go all over the place. We actually try to control how we use our thoughts to make more informed decisions that actually come from what we believe instead of trying to copy what everyone else around us is doing. Now, you mentioned mindfulness techniques. Can you give us just a couple of those that you use daily? Absolutely. I mean, my favorite is to look people in the eye when I'm talking to them and really see the person that I'm talking to instead of just kind of checking out and thinking about all the other things I need to do today, just be present in the conversation. And that, I think, is one of the most powerful tools that we can use. But also just spending a little more time considering how we're actually using our time and how we show up in the world. Mm. You know, before you walk into a party, decide what kind of person you want to be at that party. Do you want to be someone who is interested in other people or are you just there to have a good time? Are you going to make eating decisions that are going to make you feel healthy tomorrow or are you just going to, you know, take whatever is past your way, you know, one of everything and um, just being really sure of who you are and what you want out of life. Wow. And and it's something that's a little bit lost today. We're so distracted with social media and excessive demands on our time that we did not have 20 years ago. I know I feel a lot busier than my parents ever were. Yeah. And um, I think it's harder to be mindful now, but it's also something that's been practiced for thousands of years. And no one can deny that it makes us happier to be in the present moment and to be aware of who we are and what we're doing. And of course, you're incorporating this mindfulness, this focus during your yoga sessions, right? I mean, so physically, how are you uh, incorporating that mindfulness into every movement? So when I teach yoga, there are actually three parts that we focus on. And a lot of places you'll go and, and they'll just move you through the postures. They'll do some different sequences. But We really try to start with the breath and start with intention before we do anything on our mat. And then once we start moving, we incorporate breathing techniques so that we're moving on the breath. There's a term you might have heard. It's the word vinyasa, and it means moving on the breath. And so people say, I teach vinyasa yoga. That means that we are doing postures that are incorporated with breathing techniques. And the one piece that I think has been lost a lot as yoga came to America Um, It came to America in the 1930s. And one of the most important pieces is how we use our eyes. And we use the term drishti. It means gazing point. And so whenever you're doing a yoga posture, there is a specific drishti that aligns with that posture. And so if I am in chair pose, I am going to keep my eyes facing forward and I'm going to find a point to stare at and not take my eyes off of it, and then I'm going to deepen my breath. And that is a way of being more mindful in the posture than if you just throw your arms up and bend your knees and just kind of, you know, let your mind think about how hard it is, let your mind think about how out of shape you are. (laughs) You know, the mind will go in a million different directions, but if we use the drishti, we focus our eyes, and, and there's a softness. It's an intentional gaze, but then you kind of soften the muscles around the eyes and and balancing the yin and the yang of using your eyes on purpose and then breathing on purpose, the mind will quiet on its own. If you tune into those two things, it's a really magical thing to practice. That's so cool. So you mentioned breath. Is it something as simple as in through the nose, out through the mouth or vice versa? Or is there something more to that? You can do that. And that is one technique we use for centering is in through the nose, out through the mouth. As you get into your sequences, your sun salutations, you're going to want to use something that's a little more accessible. It takes some concentration to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. 
Um, something that takes less concentration is to breathe only through your nose. You can just breathe through your nose or you can add a technique called Ujjayi breathing where you close off the back of your throat. And it sounds like if you did a Darth Vader impression <laughs> um, or if you were trying to fog a mirror, it sounds like that really whispery breath. But when you do that, that actually brings more oxygen to your blood, more mm. oxygen to your brain. And it gives you a sense of well-being, a sense of peace and contentment. And it's something you don't just have to do in your yoga postures. You can do it sitting in your car while you're driving and, you know, you can still focus on the road, but you're just breathing more intentionally. And then your brain will stop thinking about the fight you just had with the boss or the grocery shopping you need to do or um, whether you're going to get that next promotion. You can just like stay in the moment and breathe. <laughs> so what would that third part be part of So your- the three parts are, are the movement and the sensation. So we tune into sensation, we tune into how we use our eyes, and we tune into how we use our breath. So those are the three parts. So go into, uh, for a beginner like me, the sensation or the movement part, what, what is it that I need to be focused on and also not focused on at the same time? So what you need to be focused on is accepting that whatever happens, happens, and you don't need to look like the person on Instagram in the pose, and you're not supposed to because all of our bodies are different and we're never going to look just like that other person. And so letting go of this idea that there is there is no perfection in yoga. The posture is always changing. If you practiced for 30 years, your warrior one would still continue to evolve. And wow. so letting go of that idea that that there is a perfect pose to be struck, it's just not true. Um, making sure that you're being safe, that you're, you know, there are certain alignment tips that are helpful to make sure that your knee's not coming forward of your ankle when you're in a lunge and, um, you know, making sure there's space between your vertebrae, you're not compressing your low back too much, things like that. But I would just really focus on what it feels like inside more than anything, because your body will tell you if you're starting to compress your low vertebrae, you'll start to feel some pain there and your body will tell you. And so really listening to that inner teacher, we all have it. And they actually say that yoga is more remembered than it is learned that these are things that we always knew how to do and we always knew we were supposed to do and sometimes we just need the encouragement of a guide to get us back into it but if you watch children it's true like if you watch babies you know when when you have your child when you uh if you watch them in the crib and they they sleep in child's pose and they will you know do an up dog sometimes when they wake up in the morning and they'll do twists and and it's That was really interesting for me, having practiced yoga before I had kids and watching them and really feeling that it's true that we already know how to do these things. If y'all could witness uh, Amber Berry's just the passion in her eyes when she's talking about this craft that she's been working for 15 years teaching, 18 years of practicing. And of course, you can connect with Amber on Twitter at Westside Yoga ATL. And you guys are online too, right? Your website? We are. We are at westsideyoga.net. And I also have my own personal page is amberberry.com and it's Barry with an A. That's so cool. We got to have you back next time to talk about more of the foundational uh, aspects of yoga. I would love to come back. It's always an honor to spend time with you, Joey. Thank you. Uh, Oh, thanks, Amber. Right. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment. Reduce your payments by 30 to 50% and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. Yes, friends, back in Wen's world with our very own Rio 2016 Olympic consultant, Mr. Mike Karolchik, CEO of Spartacus Strategies and contributor to Daily Surge and Clash Daily. Welcome back to the show, Mike. 
Well, you know what? We warned the whole world how bad this Olympics were the last time we talked. Did we not? Yep. We told everybody, hey, shouldn't they just go to Miss Bum Bum in a few months <laughs> from now? Did you get permission, by the way, to go down there? Uh, I haven't asked yet. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe I should call. I could be a better salesman. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> the, the art of persuasion. But, well, and again, what wife wouldn't let their husband go check out the top 100 butts in the world and be an honorary judge? I mean, if you really yeah. love your man, you should allow such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. We, we joked when we said the truth. And just think about this. We were one second away yesterday from a national disaster again. Mm. With Ryan Loke, one of our greatest athletes and swimmers, who refused to get to the ground when he was getting robbed by fake policemen after they won a gold medal, and they, and they put a gun to his face and forced him to the ground so, and then stole all of his belongings. So think about how close that could have been and just what we're talking about. These are athletes, gold medals, athletes who have security, perimeter checks, and they're still getting robbed. The head of Olympic security... Yeah. was robbed and his bodyguards had to shoot people outside the stadium the first night. And the stories just keep getting worse. Now, yesterday during a sailing race, instead of hitting a couch like the kayaker did to get capsized, <laughs> they ran over body parts, legs. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up either. I mean, CEO of Spartacus Strategies, Mike Rolchick, is not joking. These things are actually happening. And I remember you called this. Some, I think it was uh, about a month ago. You called this, and I thought to myself, ah, it can't be that bad, but you have lived up to your word, and I'm sure you're not proud of it either. And again, I said to you a month ago, I go to Brazil twice a year. Yep. I'm a single guy. I love it. I won't go because I know how bad it is. And I also warned you, and with my little crystal ball that I have right here, we're going to see in February and March a lot of NBA players and a lot of other best athletes who are going to be mysteriously sick with different viruses. Mm. Now, that's because why? As you saw, the basketball team, they went to the bordel. They're having sex. With who knows what the girls have? They have Zika. They're going to get sick. And then you also have a ready. Since we spoke last, one of the top rowers and top sailors in the world, former gold medalists and civil medalists, who've already contracted the KPC bug and are wiped out. So it's already happening that fast. And why do we have to continue playing this political garbage game where we all sing kumbaya and give Olympics to some third world socialist countries to feel good about things? What's next? Is 2028 really going to be awarded to Syria? So we could tell people, isn't it great to see how the refugees really aren't bad and Syria is a bunch of great, lovely people? <laughs> we have to do this. Yeah, it does seem like the facts are uh, not too popular these days. And it is kind of sad. It's disheartening because the Olympics are supposed to be a time. And, you know, we live in a world that isn't really together. It's supposed to be a time when athletes can get together and compete. As human beings should, we were born to compete with each other, and uh, now it's the, the 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 course has been altered by all these intangibles and terrible things: dirty water, body parts, crime. These guys are leaving a club; they're getting a, a gun pointed to their forehead. And you're right. What if? What if Ryan Lochte had gotten shot in the head? I mean, it would be be a nightmare. And you know what's even more sad? If Ryan did get shot, then the liberals would say it's because this is what happens when you allow guns. Yeah, yeah. It's a okay? no-win. It's a no-win. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we have to ban guns in Brazil. But here's a bigger story about socialism. For anybody who still believes in the Bernie Sanders way, this is what happened in Romania when the Romanians finally got angry. This mm-hmm. has happened in the Russians with the Russian riots from the 1910s on. When people get hungry and they're seeing in Venezuela, that's when they've had enough. Yep. Socialism, when they run out of money, can't pay your pension, can't pay things, and then people start getting hungry and starving, people start robbing and doing bad things. So this is why all these great ideas, free things, they never work, because corruption, and if you're not on Brazilian politics, their last two presidents, almost half their Congress have all been indicted. Mm for stealing the Olympic money. Right. The very connected, the Hillary Clintons, the Bernie Sanders, they've got gold bars. The Paul Ryans, they got gold bars in their freezers. The rest of you will starve. 
Man, that's unsettling, but it's so true. CEO of Spartacus Strategies, Mike Karolchik, always a pleasure. Can't wait to have you back next time, man. On Twitter, at No Chubbies. No Chubbies. <laughs> You're the man. Thanks, Mike. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment. Reduce your payments by 30 to 50% and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. The Out of Control Atlanta Traffic Watch. It's out of control. Chris Monroe, the one, the only voice of Atlanta traffic in studio in Wen's world. Bum, 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 bum. Here I am. Chris, every day is a winding the road in Atlanta. What is going on out there? It's driving me crazy. Oh, man. This morning, 285 was shut down at 5 stinking o'clock in the morning with a tractor trailer crash or some sort of big truck mm-hmm. that crashed through the center median wall. You know, the big chunk of concrete well chunks of concrete ended up on 285 thankfully nobody was seriously hurt but we're talking about 285 up by perimeter mall 400 area shut down both ways for hours they did a great job clearing that and the other thing is we got school back in now but i have a question about that accident okay did they capture the pokemon that's what i want to know they did so it was all worth it yeah there you go yeah yeah. and now you're talking about back to school so we're inevitably going to have you know, kids at the bus stop crossing the road playing Pokemon Go before the uh, the big yellow twink gets Man, there. Man, let's hope not. And and folks need to realize the, the bus law as it regards to, you know, passing buses when the stop arms are out and that kind of thing. And traffic on the local roads and the service streets has been horrible since school's back, back in. And we don't even have everybody back on the same schedule yet. Yeah, you can't even pass the buses anymore without getting a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you're so right. It's just awful because, you know what, I have a feeling these kids take their sweet time. You know, they get on the bus. They know you're waiting. Oh, they know. They know, Chris. You think? And then, and then they, they mosey all the way to the back because no one wants to, wants to sit up front. So these, they wait. They put their bag down. Then they slap a few high fives. That's what kids are doing these days, these old high fives. I'm on to your game. I'm on to the jig here. And then, they, and then they finally sit down and the bus driver doesn't 
actually hit the accelerator until <laughs> they sit down. You think it's all a big conspiracy then? Oh, yeah. And Just then you to delay your ride more. Yeah, and then you have the railroad tracks. Who stops at railroad tracks? This bus stops at every railroad track. <sighs> yeah, I know. I can't stand it. I'm over it. Literally driving anywhere in the city now is, I mean, I will absolutely plan anything and say, no, I'm not coming to that just because of traffic. And I know I'm not alone on that. Because, oh, you're not. You know, it, I know it's going to take me an hour and a half or two hours to go 20 miles or 30 miles. You know, it's just, it's, you know, but I would jump on transit, but. Oh, yeah, we don't have any trains. About that, that. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, I got a, a couple tickets to the Falcons game, the first preseason game against the Skins. And let me tell you, the the last time I ever drive to the Georgia Dome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty bad. It was a nightmare. They, yeah. they closed down all the streets, then Glovesies in the middle of the road, doing it unfairly, making me wait an extra couple minutes because I'm not pushy. The cars that mosey on up towards the middle of the intersection, he gives them the go. Right. Meanwhile, the patient white guy here has to wait an extra eight to nine minutes. <laughs> Screw you, Atlanta PD. I think maybe kidding, you, I love you, you and I should probably come up with a, a class. We should teach people how to be aggressive. Yeah. In that kind of traffic, right? We should be. That's what you got to do. Instead of defensive driving, yeah. we should go passive aggressive driving. Passive aggressive driving. <laughs> Good Lord. Where you wave at him as soon as you run him off the road. Hi. Got to go. Mm. <laughs> you know, Chris, recently I've noticed a, a glow, a glow in your countenance. And I'm wondering, have you have you found love or something, man? <laughs> the only way to fly do, do, do. is on the wings of love. On the wings of love. You know, I, uh, I have been... Using my mobile phone, and uh, the lovely f- flames of Tinder have been a fanning by the right and left swiping of you know some some nice young girls that uh, show up on Tinder from time to time. Yes, why do you ask? Well, for those of us who have been out of the game for very long, such oh, as myself, that's journal right, Mary True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so swiping yeah. right is the is the sign of interest, correct? It, it is, and 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 if you both swipe right on one another. You can, uh, you know, you can, you can, you, you're interested. She looks like Brie Bella. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Gorgeous. You know, and then there's a super like option that, uh, oh, here's Olga. You want to tell you? It was, she, she looks like she's from Sweden. Sweden. Yeah. So a lot of nice girls on here and, and, uh, yeah, well, one girl, um, uh, a lot of crazy, a lot of crazy. You need to really check out the hot crazy axis, okay, mm. to make sure that uh, that they're fitting in uh, with that. So I go out with one chick on on Tinder. You know, you meet and you talk and you do the little, hey, how you doing? And then you can have your phone number and you text and all that. And there's some usual traction. You set up the first date. Well, I go out and she's kind of crazy, you know. She's you know, so I just kind of got a little crazy back, having fun, having a good time, you know, just just being a little bit, uh, you know, not a little off color here and there. Maybe. maybe- Maybe you, you took her back to the Monroe Manor? I didn't go that far yet. Well, That'll a gentleman never segment. kisses and tells. Well, right? yeah, the Monroe Manor is a whole nother. It is a mini Playboy Mansion, and we will talk more <laughs> about that in another show. Excellent. But, but so, um, as you will know, if you haven't been to the dating uh, world for a while, it can be uh, quite challenging. So I, you know, I wasn't like this wasn't a marriage type of girl, but I thought, hey, maybe we could hang out for a little while and do some stuff. So two days later, she sends me a text, a long, lengthy text saying, uh, I'm going to be blocking your phone number, and I just wanted you to know why. I felt that you were completely inappropriate in our first date. I know I probably fanned the flames a little bit, but I'm blocking your number now. Goodbye. Oh, catch and release there. <sighs> you know, that's what I deal with out in the uh, the world of Tinder. And I'm a nice guy. You, you are a nice that? guy. I can I can vouch for that. You know, we went to a nice restaurant. I was well dressed. I did. You know, I was a I was a gentleman. Did you pay for dinner? I, yeah, of course I paid for dinner. Did you get dessert? Maybe. Well, okay. uh, gang, uh, gang. <laughs> <laughs> That's my that's my smoker laugh. Even though I don't even smoke anymore, it's a, that's like that's 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 good. <laughs> we'll continue to uh, fan the flames of Tinder. Mm, I love this idea. Let's do it again next week. What oh, say you? Yeah, why not? Right. So Tim Tebow's trying his luck at the major leagues. You know, it didn't work out in the NFL, but I salute this guy. While at the same time, I want to let you know I'm not going to ride his jock and call him a great football player. 
But this is different. He wants to be a baseball player. Dude hit 494 back in 04. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start Program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. First off, there's a good risk reward ratio here. You won't see any hooker scandals or cloudy pee. I really can't foresee any situation of buyer's remorse because of any off the field shenanigans. Secondly, there's a huge ROI to be had here. This guy has a cult following. People will come, Ray. People will come. Think about all the merch sales, jerseys, hats, tees, and a huge spike in ticket sales initially. And it may even be a while before he sees a major league ballpark. But even at AAA, he can work his way up. I really think we're going to see Philippians 413 under the eye real soon. Hey everyone, this is Marky Davis with Lima Charlie Radio Show. It is aired on WGKA AM 920 The Answer at 1 a.m. in the morning on Mondays. You can catch me live there where we talk veterans and veteran stuff and anything related to veterans and soldiers and everything like that. Check it out. From my heart and from my head, why don't people understand my intention? I'm in Wen's world and I love it. Yep, it's weird science time. And today we are back with Reasons to Believe's own Dr. Jeff Swearing. How are you today, Jeff? Doing very well, Joey. How about yourself? Doing fantastic. You know, Jeff is an astrophysicist, got his degree from Iowa State. He's also author of the book, Who's Afraid of the Universe, and co-author of the Impact Event Series. And today we're kind of talking about something that may sound odd to the common listener, such as myself. When I first heard about this, I kind of raised both eyebrows and thought, Hmm, this is kind of interesting. And the idea behind it is generating electricity through urinals. Is that correct, Jeff? That is exactly what they're doing, yes. And I think it's kind of cool. You know, I, I'm pretty sure all the bars in downtown Atlanta could keep the lights on in the metro area for years at a time on a given Saturday night. <laughs> That's certainly something we don't have a shortage of, that is for sure. <laughs> but there's a more practical appeal to this notion, and I'd love for you to explain how it works and how it can benefit society as a whole. Well, basically what they're doing is, uh, you know, in the urine there's a fair amount of uh, just chemicals in the urine. I mean, it's, it's sterile, but uh, there are just chemicals that are, one, need to be degraded so that uh, they – don't take oxygen out of the environment and the soil. Uh, but what they found is that there are bacteria that will interact with the stuff inside the urine. And the, the net effect is that it separates protons from electrons. Hmm. And when you have a charge separation like that, you can then use that charge separation to generate electricity as the electrons flow back and meet up with the protons. And so they've des- devised these little cells where the bacteria or the microbes are on one of the, uh, the cathode, and the electrons get funneled back around through an external circuit, and they can use that to then generate electricity. How much urine would it take to keep the lights on for, say, an hour or so? You know, I've been looking around trying to find the answer to that, and I don't have the answer. What I, what I do know is this. They used, uh, they, they've made two of these urinals where they've tried to test that out, one where they're testing out on, on a college campus and another where they've tested it out in a more public environment. And, but, you know, these things have a certain number of cells, which, you know, the cells are probably five inches by five inches by five inches, something that size, and they use a few hundred of those. They're able to generate right up around half a watt, which 
is not a tremendous lot. I mean, you know, we put one watt or you know, 100 watt light bulbs in as the standard incandescent light bulb. Right. Uh, but they're able to, that's enough energy or enough power that you can power LEDs. And so now you take and imagine having this out in a remote region, you can actually put lights around this and add to the safety of the environment. And when we're talking safety, we're also going to correlate that with nobility because in a lot of these refugee camps, there is some assault going on, especially during the nighttime hours where women and children are going to use the restroom. And unfortunately, because of a lot of cultural and religious differences, women are kind of viewed as less than human in a lot of these cases Mm -hmm. and and taken advantage of. So this could, in effect, be a wonderful thing to prevent these sexual assaults in the long run. Right, Jeff? Exactly. You know, I mean, it basically it's shining some light on the situation and, you know, where you've got light, it's harder for dark things to happen. And so, you know, just by a very practical thing that happens every or you're taking advantage of a process that just goes on naturally, you're able to provide light and make an environment safer, which is in an already very difficult situation. I think that's just a remarkable solution. And I think the goal overall is to get lights all over these camps. So, you know, wherever there's one light, people will be attracted to that one area, but eventually the overarching theme would be to light the whole camp so everybody can see where everybody else is and what's going on, right? I think that is. And, you know, again, the the issue there is uh, can you generate enough electricity to do that? But even, you know, I mean, if you imagine you got 10,000 people in an area and, you know, they regularly have to use the restroom, one, by, by using these urinals, uh, you know, and I assume that as we design, they're going to get more power out, and they're going to be more efficient and be able to generate more light and do stuff like that. But the, the big thing is, is that you're in this environment where you can't run power lines or anything like that, but yet you can still generate light. And then also you can generate enough light around that it just, you know, like I said, darkness goes away when there's light. And so the more you can do, the, the safer the environment is. And I think, I, I think that's a great thing. So let's say we were doing this here, and I know there have been some experiments over in England, uh, one of the places that you mentioned this was going on, and would it be possible for the transfer of energy? So let's say we we generate enough to light a, a place for a few days. Could we send that over to Syria or these other places where refugees are settling, or is it like an on-site kind of thing? Well, it's going to be predominantly on site. You're dealing with relatively small amounts of power, and any time you get into power transmission, you end up with losses. Mm. And so, you know, any time we transmit power over long distances, we amp the voltage way up. Or that's a bad way to say that. Talking electricity, we ramp the voltage way up so that because you can transmit power at higher voltages with less energy loss. But in the in the types of the amounts of energy we're talking about. If you try and send that too far away, you're just going to lose all of lose all the power, and it won't be very useful. So this is really a local environment. But it, but even in that, what you're talking about is you're trying to put it in places that is very hard to get electricity to in the first place. And so transmission is not the issue. Just having it in the first place is what you're what you're working at. Right. And in case you're just joining us, we are with Reasons to Believe's own Dr. Jeff Swearing, astrophysicist. He works for a place where science and faith converge, and that is Reasons.org. Found on Twitter, RTB underscore official. And of course, Jeff's personal Twitter through Reasons to Believe, RTB underscore official. J Zwerink, Z W E E R I N K. Now, when I'm thinking about urinals, I mean, I'm thinking about that's how guys use the restroom. Is there any way that you think in the future this could be kind of transferred into a, a toilet that ladies can use as well? I'm assuming this is really, it, it has nothing to do with the collection process. As long as you collect it, then you can use it. Okay. Um, I do know they made a comment that this was just designed for male urinals, and I, I assume that's just an engineering problem. That's not a fundamental <laughs> problem, because once you've got the urine, the bacteria can work on it and generate the electricity. So this should be universal. Wow. Well, this stuff has just blown my mind from the laboratory to the laboratory and back again. <laughs> We've been with Reasons to Believe's own astrophysicist, Dr. Jeff Swearing. Jeff, thank you so much for your time today in Wind's World. Thanks, Joey. Really appreciated the time. Right. Hey, this is the Deeds, the sales energizer. And like you, I'm in Wen's World. It's a frightening place, but we're here. This is what I want you to do. Listen to the show, the whole show. And then when you're done, go to my website, remedysalesmatch.com. Fill out the subscription form for the newsletter, and I will send you a free book that's going to change your life, The Hitchhiker's Guide to Guaranteed Success. Do it after the show. 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. You're in Wayne's world. Yep, back in Wayne's world, and I am with author Kate Sukol. She wrote the book, This Is Your Brain on Sex. It is the science behind the search for love. And, you know, last week we just kind of got into the first part of the book, and it deals a lot with, you know, the fact that a lot of people think that the heart is in charge of all things love, lust, and so on and so forth. But really the brain is the culprit behind all of these mysteries in our lives. So I wanted to bring Kate back to kind of expound on this work of art that I'm currently reading uh, so we can get into chapter two the ever loving brain kate welcome back to when's world how are you i am well thanks how about yourself doing great so back in the day before modern medicine technology brain scanners and such some people believe the source of all these conflicting emotions and feelings were from the brain and others felt like they were from the heart where does kate sukel stand on this issue is the brain. And, uh, you know, certainly, you know, I'm sure if, if Aristotle and Plato back in the day had had brain scanners, they might have had a different approach. But of mm. course, you know, they were going by physiology because what happens when we're in front of that object of our affection, our heart pounds, exactly. we get sweaty, we have a really visceral reaction. And so it seems more like, uh, you know, this is the heart doing something rather than, you know, all that silly putty stuck in our skull. <laughs> <laughs> so there are different systems in our brains. Kind of help me fill in the gaps here and connect the dots. What happens where in our brain and why? So, you know, basically a lot of this stuff is happening in what's called the reptilian brain. Sort of deep in our skull, almost near the brain stem, you have this area called the basal ganglia. And, you know, this is sort of the risk and reward processing center of the brain. It goes after the best things in life. So love, sex, and of course, romantic love. But there are sort of these three different areas that um, are each sort of uniquely there to represent different aspects of love. So of course you have the hypothalamus. It's really interested in sex 
an attraction and, of course, propagating the species. You have the area of the ventral tegmental, uh, ventral tegmental area, which is a different part of the basal ganglia that seems to light up when we're really in romantic love. And then you have still other areas for attachment, so how you might feel for a really good friend, you know, kind of the the warm wool sock feeling, the oatmeal cookie, raisin cookie uh, feeling kind of thing of, of other people that you have. The ventral pallidum, is that what it's called? That is the ventral pallidum, correct. Nice. So, you know, you've learned something. My, my, you can break this out next time you want to sweet talk your wife. <laughs> um, so all these, these systems fire up. And, of course, you know, some of them, sometimes they work together and sometimes they don't. And, and really, this is why you see so many different variations on the love and sex theme. You know, we, we tell the story all the time that it's always, you know, boy meets girl, they fall in love, get married, have babies, and live happily ever after. But we know that that's not always the way it works. Sometimes you can be deeply in love with somebody and still very physically attracted to somebody else. And that's why the whole notion of it, love being a basic instinct is just shattered into a million pieces, right? I think love is a drive. So we talk a lot about sex as an instinct, and, and I think that this is where some of the confusion comes in. We are a deeply, deeply social species. You know, humans have to connect with other people in order to survive and thrive in the world. And so when we talk about, we talk about the sex drive a lot and how that's an instinct, but love itself, that need to connect is also a real, you know, primordial drive in the human species. Um, most people don't get, you know, sick or upset from lack of sex, but lack of connection, lack of love can, can really knock us for a loop. Wow. Um, and that's what a lot of these, these new studies are really showing. You know, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, sticking certain parts into other parts that we really want out of life. It's that, it really is that feeling of connection. We are with author Kate Sukel. Check her website out, K-A-Y-T-S-U-K-E-L.com. And, of course, keep the conversation rolling and going on Twitter, at K-A-Y-T-S-U-K-E-L. So you know how they say a picture is worth a thousand words? But yes. The brain kind of works in a different way. So we may not even necessarily need to use our eyes, but hear certain words and make that connection that still makes our hearts pound. Right, Kate? Yeah, and I mean, I think that's really interesting, Is and, and this kind of goes back to this whole idea about love being a drive as well. You know, we can hear certain attributes, hear, hear certain things, and when we're in love, you know, it, it you know, lights up these areas. And that's kind of why we get a little bit obsessive, right, about our partners. Whenever we newly fall in love, we never think about this about, about ourselves, of course. We, we think about this our best friends. Yeah, when right. they fall in love, they kind of get crazy. and yeah. They're kind of annoying to be around. And every little thing you talk about somehow goes back to their new boyfriend or girlfriend. Right. And, you know, you talk about, oh, gosh, I got, oh, they put tomatoes on my salad. Bobby loves tomatoes, <laughs> especially those cherry tomatoes. You know, it's like you can't have a conversation without that um, going back to that person. Right. And yeah, you know, so no, it, it doesn't always have to be a visual thing. It doesn't always, you know, have to be right in front of you. Um, I, I think that's why sometimes we, we get so uh, <sighs> affected by movies like The Notebook or uh, even Twilight. And <laughs> it, it, you know, there's something there that really calls to that drive to, to connect with other people. Mm. You know, and there's a lot of interacting between the different areas of the brain, but there's also a very powerful neurotransmitter called dopamine and other chemicals that help fuel this love related brain network. The old recycler, as it's called. But I'd love to get into this next time. We can talk about the the reward areas of our brain and how they are facilitated in this whole love scenario. Sure, sure. Yeah. And I mean, dopamine, it's interesting. It's it really is. People talk a lot about it as a pleasure chemical mm -hmm. because it's released in quite great amounts during sex, during novel activity, and of course in love. But you also sort of see, um, you know, this is a chemical that is released a lot in learning. It really is a learning chemical, and it's involved in so many different aspects of human behavior. In fact, one writer, Von Bell, he actually called it the Kim Kardashian of neurotransmitters, uh, which you know is kind of funny. And is it because the chemical has the largest backside out of all the uh other chemicals? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, it's, it's, it's everywhere, uh, you know, in the brain, basically. It, it just <laughs> takes over so much stuff, just like Kardashians is taking over the world. Um, so, it, it, you know, it, but it, it is a chemical that really does play a large role in reward processing, in love, in sex. Um, and, you know, ultimately helps us form really important bonds. Thanks, Kate. We appreciate your time here in One's World. 
Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Hey, it's Amber Berry from Westside Yoga. Connect with me on Twitter at Westside Yoga ATL. I'm in Wen's world and I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, you may recognize the following voice as the voice of Dan Ratcliffe. Dan Ratcliffe, welcome to the show. Thank you, Joey. It's good to be here. Oh, man, it's great to have you on. I'm, I even remember as a kid listening to 104.7, hearing your sultry, powerful voice. Now you're making me feel old. Thank you so much, Joey. <laughs> well, it was only a few years ago. <laughs> okay. 12. <laughs> and uh, 16. All right, I'm just going to be honest for a minute. But yeah, man, Voice of Footprints. Now you're working on a show with your compadre, Rick Probes, mm-hmm. called Faith Talk Live, right? Yeah, Faith Talk Live is fun. We, we have... Uh, Local pastors and ministry leaders, uh, comedians, actors, you name it, any anybody and everybody, except for Joey. Uh, we have anybody and everybody on and uh, just talking about faith, you know, what they're doing in the community to uh, to represent Christ in the community and just having a good time. Now, wh- how did you get into this business? Because you definitely have the voice and face for radio. Man, I even as a kid, I was always fascinated with radio and and especially when I got to see somebody who was on the radio and see them actually in person and think, man, he doesn't look a thing like he sounds. Wow, he's really ugly. No wonder why he's in radio. <laughs> I can relate. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> Me too. That's why I'm in radio. Uh, I, I was just always fascinated by it. And um, as I got older and got into college, my voice got deeper and I thought, hey, I might actually be able to make money off of this. And hey, this is a whole lot easier than trying to be a doctor or something. So you now, know. Texas Tech, right? Yep. So your journey started in college. You got into broadcasting at Texas Tech, Mm -hmm. and then following Texas Tech, uh, start from there. Did an internship while I was in school. I did an internship at a radio station in Dallas called KLIF, and it's a it was a news talk station. Still is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, And so they hired me out of college. Started doing overnights. Absolutely hated overnights, but I did that for almost a year and uh, just doing news, you know, newscasts, and eventually got into doing a little bit of sports. And then said, you know what, I'm tired of putting microphones in front of people's faces. I just want to be on the air and and play music. So I went into that. Now, what brought you to the ATL? Well, uh, funny story. Uh, First off, I I went to the uh, sister station of The Fish in Dallas-Fort Worth. I worked there for almost two years um, as a morning show producer. And then I... um, Went and did afternoons in Tulsa, Oklahoma, of all places. Wow. Yeah. And uh, immediately wanted to get out of Tulsa <laughs> after having grown up in Dallas. Tulsa was a small town for me. And uh, when the fish went on the air, um, I saw an ad. They, they were looking for middays and afternoons. So I said, hey, let's let's apply. And here I am. And here you've been for how long now? Mm, uh, almost 16 years. Wow. Uh, what a great story. What yeah. a great story. You're still doing footprints, right? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Footprints are just a short little uh, one minute pieces. And, and that's the hard part is, is getting these stories into one minute. Um, but just talking about everyday folks and and people that uh, everybody knows, like, you know, sports, sports stars, actors, athletes, whatever. Uh, and just telling their story of faith and how they're walking out their faith uh, in life. And um, and sometimes it's a story of how they came to know Christ, or it could be a story of you know ministries that they're getting into and whatnot. But just little faith stories that hopefully encourage people that hear them. Now it's okay to name drop on the show. I'm totally cool with that. So throw out a few names that you've interviewed there. Well, I've uh, I've talked to Kirk Cameron. Everybody knows Kirk Cameron, Mike Seaver from Growing Pains. Come on, show me that smile again. Show me that smile. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Huh? Uh, I was able to talk to him. I've talked to uh, Jody Benson, who was the voice of Ariel in The Little Mermaid. She was a lot of fun to talk to. Sing! Yes. Talked to lots of uh, musicians, of course, uh, like Lecrae, uh, people like uh, Trip Lee, all the artists that we play on The Fish. I would talk to a lot of those guys, Crowder, people like that. I've even uh, interviewed people like Ben Carson on the phone, um, so that was cool. And then, of course, just everyday people that... You and I wouldn't know from from Adam if if we saw them on the street, but they've got great faith stories of, of great things that they're doing for the kingdom of Christ. Just everyday folks that live here in Atlanta, they're doing great things for the kingdom. And so they're they're cool stories to be able to hear what people are doing. And it's really encouraging to me. That's really cool. I love kicking it with regular folks. So tell us more about this show with Rick Probes, Faith Talk Live. Faith Talk Live. Uh, basically, it's it's a way for Rick and I to do the shtick that we've always done in the hall. Um, but they, they wanted to get us out of the hall because we were annoying <laughs> people. And so they're, we're in a, a studio doing it now. Uh, we get to go on and uh, and talk and uh, have folks in that are 
people that we like to call movers and shakers in the Atlanta faith community and just talk about what they're doing, what's going on. Uh, you know, if it's a pastor of a church, what that church is doing in their community to to affect their community and to to spread the gospel. Um, or if it's a ministry, you know, there's so many different ministries here in Atlanta, what they're doing, uh, their specific niche and whatnot. So it's really cool. And I am all about shameless plugs. You guys can hear Faith Talk Live every single weekday at 10 a.m. on 590 Faith Talk Atlanta and the replay show 3 p.m. on AM 970. Now, people that live in Atlanta know your voice and you're going to leave quite the radio legacy. But what kind of legacy do you want to be remembered for ultimately? Besides being one of those filthy Dallas Cowboy fans. You know, honestly, what what I want to be remembered for is less so about what I did on the air or in my career and more so about what I what I've done to hopefully pour into people that I've discipled with a group of uh, teenage guys and just love pouring into them and discipling them. Um, And I'd rather be known for that, which which I think is more of of an eternal impact than what I'm known for just for what I did on the radio or what I did for a career. That's awesome, man. How do we follow you on the social media? On the social media, on Facebook, uh, just Dan Ratcliffe, R-A-T-C-L-I-F-F-E. Not to be confused with the Harry Potter Dan Ratcliffe, who spells his with a D. <laughs> um, or Twitter, uh, Dan uh, at Dan FTA. Um, I'm on Instagram, anywhere and everywhere. So Thanks for spending some time in Wen's world. We appreciate it, Dan. All right. Thanks, man. Great! All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, Visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. 
That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 